Oliver Ferry from our International Affairs Desk joins me now on set. Now, welcome, Ollie. Now, these, uh, these polls, do they suggest a rejection of Santa Marin and her government? I mean, she's trailing. Well, that might appear to be the case, but this is really just a reflection of Finland's political landscape where no one party uh, prevails or dominates at the moment. Uh, in fact, um, her Social Democratic Party, they're narrowly trailing behind, as you said, behind the centre-right National Coalition Party and the far-right populist Finns Party. But they're also doing slightly better than they did four years ago at the last election when they topped the poll with 17.7%. Uh, today, they're actually at 18.7%. That's behind the Finns uh, on 19.5 and the National Coalition on 19.8. So it's far from a disaster for the incumbent Prime Minister, but she will have to top the poll if she wants to stay in the job because the party that gets the most seats uh, gets the right to form a government. That will almost certainly be a coalition, as is the case generally in Finland and is the case currently. Uh, there are five parties in San Amaran's government, ranging from the left to the centre and also the small Swedish People's Party, which represents uh, Finland's Swedish-speaking majority. Sanna Marin, who is Finland's youngest ever prime minister, she's very popular abroad. And even within Finland herself, she's, she enjoys quite a bit of popularity. She has a 64% job approval rating, which you know, French presidents, for instance, would be very, very happy to get something that high. But she's also a bread and butter politician for Finnish people. She's not a celebrity, so to speak, as, as some people from outside uh, the country might see. So she's definitely not going to be judged on personality alone. It's going to be particular issues. If the National Coalition Party does get the most seats, their, uh, their leader, Pateri Orpo, is most likely to be the senior partner. He will probably try to form a coalition, be it with the far-right Finns, or also with the Social Democrats. So if it is the Social Democrats, we could see the Prime Minister taking another portfolio. What might throw the cat among the pigeons is if the far-right Finns party actually top the polls. Um, that would be for the first time, um, like other European countries, Finland has grappled with uh, the far-right. But uh, they've been very much a fixture of Parliament since their breakthrough in 2011. They were even in government for two years, from 2015 to 2017, as a junior partner. Now, Sanna Marin has said that she will not go into government with uh, the, the, the Finns party, which she says is openly racist. So they will have to look to parties on the centre and the right to form a government, if need be. Now, um, what issues should we be looking out for? What are likely to sway the Finns uh, at this election? And, and how will um, you know, its new NATO membership impact the polls? Uh, NATO membership was not really a burning issue at all because it was, it was it w it, domestically in Finland, it was last year's issue. It was all done and dusted really before these elections started. It also has cross-party support. And if it had benefited anyone, it probably was the National Coalition Party because they had for long lobbied for Finland to join a NATO. But whatever bump that they got, it's pretty much died down now. They're, they've dropped 5% in the polls since last June, which probably it did benefit them at that time, but the elections are coming at the wrong time now. Uh, Ukraine is, however, an issue. Um, the, not that there's any opposition to Finland's support for Ukraine in the war against Russia, but rather sometimes the way the government is dealing with it. Uh, Sa Sanna Marin made some rather unguarded comments on a recent visit to Kiev, where she said that Helsinki might possibly give up, or at least talk about giving up, its Hornet fighter jets uh, to give them to Ukraine. And this was viewed quite dimly uh, domestically in Finland. They thought that it might be leaving Finland in the lurch uh, from a national security point of view. The National Coalition Party has plans to finance, uh, to, re to balance the budget. And a lot of people think that this will re result in welfare cuts and cuts to other services, which is actually what happened the last time they were in government in 2015. They're also perceived as being too close to the far-right Finns party with the accusation that if you vote for the National Coalition Party, you get uh, the, the Finns uh, into government. The Finns themselves have been embroiled in controversy over uh, allegedly racist campaign posters, and they also want to ban immigration from non-EU countries. The party is also inconsistent with its messaging over whether it will take Finland out of the UK, uh, or out of the EU, rather. And actually, the National Coalition Party itself says that that is a major sticking point for any potential uh, coalition uh, talks between the two parties.
Oliver, thank you so much for that update. That's uh, Oliver Ferry from our International Affairs Desk.